Now this is single-handedly the best project on this list because if you learn this, you'll learn pretty much how most websites on the internet are structured and you'll also add a very powerful skill to your toolset that you'll find you'll end up coming back to more often than not. What's up everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, I just wanna say you've probably seen my last few videos and hopefully they were helpful. And if you did find them helpful, I'd really appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up because I'm sure you'll enjoy it too. With that in mind, let's get started. So in this video, I'm gonna go over three programming projects that I think every programmer should try. Whether you're just learning how to program for the first time or whether you've been programming for a while now and you're thinking about developing your skills a bit further, uh, this video is for you. Now I'm going to kick off and start off with the first project which I think is especially useful and even more useful if you've just started your programming journey and that is an alarm clock. Now you're probably thinking why on earth would I want to start off with an alarm clock? It's such a simple application and that's exactly the reason why you should start off with it. An alarm clock is perfect because all you have to do is play a sound at a specific time nothing more, nothing less. Because it's so simple, it's so easy to get started with and it's perfect if you've never programmed before. You just focus on playing that sound. And while that might not sound interesting and challenging, I've always said that when you start off learning how to program, you don't want to start off with a really hard application. That's going to be very difficult at the beginning and it's probably going to put you off. Initially, you just want to focus on getting fluency in the programming language that you're trying to learn. And you'll find that when you start getting those quick wins at the beginning, it's going to motivate you to want to continue further. Now, an alarm clock starts off pretty simple, but you can begin to add features that make it more complex. Features like dismiss or snooze or even the ability to have multiple alarms. These are great additions that are going to really help you to push your programming skills a bit further. What's great about this is it's quite simple but also very versatile. If you're wanting to learn how to build an app, then you can build an alarm clock as an app. Or if you're wanting to learn how to build a website, you can build an alarm clock as a website. And you can really mold it to your programming goals and objectives uh, in your journey. Now to sum up, an alarm clock is a great utility application that you should really give a try, um, especially if you're learning how to program for the first time. I just want to pause and say that if you are enjoying this video again i'd really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up it takes a long time to make these videos but i do enjoy them and hopefully you are finding them helpful and if you do give it a thumbs up it'd go a long way in helping me to grow this channel now the next project i have on this list is even better what is it it's a web scraper in one of my very early programming projects, I needed to get a list of every course offered by a few universities in London. Now, as you can imagine, there are so many university and college websites, and I didn't want to manually go onto each website, copy the list of courses, and then put them onto a spreadsheet. That would have taken forever. So what did I do? I built a web scraper, a very simple program that would visit each university website, pull the list of courses, and then output them into text files. And it didn't take that long. Now at this moment is when I realized how powerful a web scraper actually is. It saved me hours and probably days of going to each university website, copying the list of courses, putting them onto a spreadsheet. Instead, it did all of that in less than a minute. Now I mentioned a web scraper teaches you how websites are structured. And the reason why it does that is because to write a web scraper for a website, you need to understand how it's structured first. In my case, it was telling it exactly where it could find the dropdown to get the list of courses. But for you, you might want to get text or something else on a web page. Whatever it might be, building a web scraper will teach you how the target website is structured. And as you continue to build more web scrapers, you start to notice patterns between these websites, which will beef up your web development skills. This is perfect if you're wanting to get into web development, but you'll find that you'll end up building web scrapers for all sorts of things. Just the other day, for example, I wanted to find out whether or not a few products that I had my eye on were in stock. Instead of me going to that website every day, manually checking if the item was in stock, I built a web scraper that I could just run and get it to notify me when the item was in stock. There are so many more examples of how you can use web scrapers and they really are as powerful as they sound. So I highly recommend whatever stage of programming that you're at, whether you're a beginner or you've been programming for a few months or even a few years, this is such a powerful skill that you should definitely add to your tool set. Now the third and final project on this list is pretty much how every single company website in the world uses and shares data. What is it? 
it's a REST API. Now, the best way to explain this is to give you an example. Say, for example, I wanted to get the list of all the stock prices for a given company over the past five years. Now, a web scraper is one way of doing this, but you'll find that is very difficult and this is quite data intensive. This is exactly where an API comes in. Yahoo Finance offer an API for you to be able to access a list of all the stock prices for any company. The best thing about something like this is it's very easy and simple to do. You just need to issue what's known as a HTTP request, which you can see on the screen now, and you'll get a data set back. How you choose to use that data is totally up to you, but that's just one example of where you can use an API to be able to get access to the data that you desire. Now, this is just one example of an API that gives you access to financial data, but there are so many more APIs. NASA, for example, offer an API that allows you to get the best picture of the day. Spotify offer an API for you to be able to update your playlist. As you can imagine, the list of APIs are endless, but building your own API is definitely a project that I highly recommend for every programmer, because not only will it allow you to understand exactly how data is exchanged across the internet, but it'll also give you an opportunity to be able to build an API for your own data set. If for example, you're building an app for your local library to show all the different books that are available, this is exactly where you would build an API that will be able to give access to that data. An API acts as a middleman between the database and you, and it will allow you to be able to do things like add books, update them, and even remove them over time. However you choose to build an API is definitely a project that I think every single programmer should work on. It will teach you exactly how data is shared and exchanged across the internet. And it will also teach you a lot about web development. It's an essential school for every web developer. But over time, you'll find that as you start to build programs, you're going to need to access different data from different sources. And it's likely that you're going to have to use REST APIs to get access to that data. So to sum up, an API is a fantastic project that I highly recommend every single programmer work on. It will teach you exactly how pretty much every website in the world uses and exchanges data. So that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hopefully it was helpful. And if you did find it helpful, please, 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 if you haven't already, do give it a thumbs up below. It's going to help me massively grow the channel. If you always want to get updated whenever I release a new video about software engineering or even tutorials on Python, and JavaScript and on other programming languages, click the subscribe button below and click the bell icon so you get notified of that. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a lovely day. See you later. Now the last, now the third and final, now the third and final.